Welcome to the Equip Our Church podcast, a podcast of Infinity Church. Our goal is to serve our church family by engaging in conversations about the Christian life. My name is Nathan Nile, and I'm here with Philip Long. We serve as pastors of Infinity. We hope this can equip and encourage you in your walk with the Lord and your engagement with the church. Well, hey, Philip. Hey, buddy. How you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing very well. Excited for this next episode. Yeah, me too. Well, last week we interviewed one of our new staff members, Jorge Navarro. And if you haven't heard that podcast yet, um, go back to last week and listen to that. It was awesome getting to talk to him, getting to know him a little more. So we want you to get to know him more. But today we have another special guest. Why don't you uh, introduce us to who we have today? Awesome. Well, today we have the privilege of introducing to our church family, Lily Woolbright, who is also, along with Jorge, one of our newest staff members. And I am really excited for Infinity to hear more from Lily. So Lily, welcome to the Equip Our Church podcast. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Will you uh, start us off today telling us just a little bit about who you are? Yeah. So I'm Lily. Um, I've been married to my husband, Caleb, for two years, and we just welcomed our first son um, two weeks ago, and his name is Hudson. I went to North Greenville University. I got a bachelor's in Spanish education, and I've been teaching Spanish at Fountain High School for the past two years. It's a good and place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I like the school. That's how I met Amber Long, Philip's wife, um, and ultimately what led us to coming to Infinity, which is a blessing from God. Um but I'm actually have the privilege of transitioning over to being a stay-at-home mom um, after my maternity leave is over, and um, I'm very thankful for that. That's something I've been wanting to do for a, a really long time, so I'm excited for this season that is coming up. That's great. That's great. Yeah, I first met you, wow, coming up on two years ago, uh, right? Yeah. That uh, You started at Fountain Inn, and I remember when Amber interviewed was a part of that interview process for you at the high school. Yeah. She was super excited for you to come on board. Knew you were young and right out of school, and she was nervous for you. First year teaching is always crazy, but you survived it and did well. And um, and then we're excited about this next season for you to be able to spend more time at home, but also spend time with us, hang out with yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. So we're thankful for that uh, and thankful for the chance to get to know you. One of the things we wanted uh, just for our Infinity Church family to hear about you is a little bit of your faith story. I know mm-hmm. a lot of people... Uh, you've been around the church for a while now, so they've seen you on stage, and the people in your discipleship group and others, they know your story, but uh, we just wanted the, the broader church family to hear more about your, your heart for the Lord. So can you tell us a little bit about your testimony? Yeah. Um, I grew up in a Christian home, and I grew up in Piedmont, South Carolina. It's about 40 minutes from here. Um, but my faith was very much my parents. Yeah. So every... Sunday I would go to church, every Wednesday I would go to church. We were faithfully going to church. Um, but I went for the social aspect. Um, I went because it was required by my parents. Yeah. And when I was about 10 years old, my dad uh, felt the calling to ministry, so he went to seminary and started looking for churches to pastor and um, got a position at a church in Utah, a very small town called Ridgefield. And so when I was 13, we moved to Utah. Um, left everything that we had here behind, wow. and it was a lonely season for me. Um, we went in the middle of a school year, so I did online schooling the rest of that year. It was April to June. I did online schooling. Didn't have any friends. The mm. church we the church that we had in Piedmont had 200 people on any given Sunday, and then the church that we had in Richfield had maybe 20 people, yeah. and the youth was very limited. And so... Um, yeah, it was just just a lonely season in my life and I got to the point where I felt like I would be friends with anybody. Um, and so that is kind of what I did. I got involved with some bad influences and I'm thankful that the Lord protected me from, um, being tempted to do a lot of the things that they were doing, but I was still living a very worldly life. And my junior year of high school, the church here in Piedmont, flew all of the missionaries that they had sent out back to Piedmont to have like a missionary fair. Wow. And we could set up a booth and people would walk around and um, learn about your ministry and that kind of thing, be able to pray over you. And I took it upon myself to start walking around and I found a booth for an organization called Global Year, which they send out um, 
students or people from 18 to 25 years old to different parts of the world for a gap year. So you're gone for a year to do some sort of ministry work. And I just kind of put my name down for more information. They called me and I knew I wanted to go to college, but I didn't know what I wanted to study. And so I said, hey, let's take a gap year. But at that point, my faith was so shallow that I didn't care about the ministry aspect. I saw it as an opportunity to travel. And um, so I signed up in October of 2016 and wouldn't leave until September of 2017. So August of 2017 is when it started to get real for me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I was about to go away for a year to do work in a random place Going by myself, yeah. no, with no one that I knew, um, I would be with a host family there and another girl from Georgia who is now my absolute best friend in the whole world. Mm. Um, but I didn't know them at that point. And I had the thought, how am I going to fake it wow. so that they believe? Because we had to do a whole interview process. We had to tell our testimony. We had to, what I felt like was convince them that we were in a place spiritually to do ministry Mm -hmm. in other parts of the world. And I faked it through that, but um, I said, how am I going to be able to fake it on the mission field? Mm -hmm. And so I sat down and uh, opened my Bible and uh, just opened it to 1 Corinthians 13. And 1 Corinthians 13, 12 says, Now I know in part, then I shall know, know fully, even as I have been fully known. And that struck me to my core Mm. that um, God knows me fully. I haven't taken the time to get to know him fully. Um, But this journey that I was about to embark on uh, was totally a part of his plan. I knew in that moment that I couldn't do it without him. Um, And that was the moment that I devoted my life to Christ. I was 18 years old, a month away from moving to the Dominican Republic. And... um, So I moved to DR and started doing the mission work, and I always refer to that time in my life as the best but hardest season, Mm -hmm. because um, I had never been more secure. I had never um, been more encouraged, but I had never been more pruned, Mm -hmm. and the Lord had to really sanctify me during that time. And Brinley, the girl from Georgia, that's now my best friend that was there with me, Um, had a huge part in that. The Lord used her a lot, and she'd call me out on a lot of sin. (laughs) And, um, yeah, so that was just a year of intense sanctification. I came home um, against my will. My parents wanted me to go to college. I wanted to stay there longer. Absolutely did not want to leave. And um, I went to North Greenville University. I met my husband, Caleb, our freshman year, and uh, have... Continue to follow the Lord since then. It's, of course, been a bumpy road. Nobody's perfect. But um, he's really blessed us now with infinity and everything along the way to get us here. Um, that now this this is a very fruitful, a very joyful season of our life. And, mm. yeah, that's Amen. how we got to where we are today. That's awesome. That really is cool. That's really cool. It's cool to hear, um, you know, just as as your parents are seeking to follow the Lord in obedience. And um, yes, you're, you're not alone. I'm not telling you anything, but missionary kids, that's a hard, it really is a hard place to be sometimes. Mm -hmm. And um, it's awesome that God used even that struggle to make, to make the um, gaps in your faith, um, uh, you know, clear to you Mm -hmm. and that eventually get to the point where you couldn't stand it. And uh, I just love that. I love that you in the Bible, Jesus using his word, (laughs) Uh, to convict you. That's just, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Um, I might, I know I gave you this to you in a certain order, but I was just thinking through the NGU Mm -hmm. connection you just ended with. Um, Tell us about about music, because I know at North Greenville you used your talents and gifts in music. So tell us about just kind of your heart for music and how you got how you got involved in sure. using that for the Lord? Yeah. So I grew up in a very musical family. We're the type of family that every time we get together for a holiday, somebody's got a guitar, somebody's on the piano. We're singing usually hymns um, or worship music. And so that was just always a big part of my life. I sang with my mom in church when I was six years old and on. Um, and I have sung in other capacities since then. When I went to college, well, first of all, I actually led worship at my church in DR, so that continued on through there. 
And then when I went to college, um, I got a scholarship to be on Joyful Sound, which is their traveling singing group. And I loved doing that. I was a team leader for three years, which was a huge responsibility, but um, it was a good time of sanctification. And um, before, I will say before I was saved, I had a very self-centered view of worship. Um, I relied a lot on the quality of my singing and yeah. beat myself up a lot if it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. I saw it as a form of entertainment, and I wanted to receive compliments from people is yeah. what I was getting at. But yeah. then after being saved, I got on stage, and I tried to do it the same way that I had been doing it, mm. and I felt awful, mm. and I was just convicted that I was doing this wrong for the wrong reasons. And so since... Um, I am dedicated to focusing less on the quality of my voice and more on the posture of my heart, because I think that Hmm. God cares a lot more about that than what I sound like. Hmm. Um, But I do believe that he has given me a talent uh, for the opportunity for me to turn around and use it to glorify him. So I don't just want to take that lightly and say, well, I'm just not going to, you know, I'm just going to sing in the shower or whatever, <laughs> sing in the car, and I'm not going to use it. Um, so I do see that as a, a responsibility to, to give that back to the Lord. Um, but I was uh, reading through Romans this morning, and mm-hmm. in Romans 15, it talks about, it challenges us to uh, sing with one voice to glorify the Lord. And so I think I thought about our, the, our time of, worship through song and our time of singing with the congregation and how the Lord is glorified in all of our voices together, not me sounding louder than anybody else. And we've talked about this in staff meeting too, um, how it's so cool when you can hear the congregation singing (laughs) on top of the, the music and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, that just reiterates that it's not the quality of my voice. Of course, we strive for musical excellence because we want to give our best to the Lord, but um, it's not the quality of our voices. It's the quality of our hearts and our intentions. That's really good. That's really good. And that's so cool to hear. Um, Of course, I've heard you say that, but it's it's great for our, you know, our church family to hear that because um, it's just such an encouraging thing to know that's, that's the heart of the people leading us in worship from stage is that uh, I know you all practice hard, you work hard, you think about notes and keys and things that don't make sense to me, and I, we appreciate that because it sounds like it makes it sound good. Um, but it's good to know as we're looking at y'all, y'all are looking to the Lord. Like you're thinking more about your heart of worship, and the posture of your heart, than about exactly what notes and those kind of things. So it's just, yeah, a real encouragement. It's also an encouragement to those of us who can't carry a tune in the bucket. <laughs> like it's okay that the Lord does not. The Lord's not upset at me for having no idea what a, no. a C note is or whatever. Yeah, you're supposed to make it a joyful noise. That's not right. It doesn't have to be a beautiful noise, just I, joyful. I, I frequently <laughs> misname the group at NGU and call it joyful, joyful noise. noise. Caleb does that too, on sound. purpose, yeah. to annoy me. Yeah. Like, does it have to be joyful for Philip or joyful for us hearing it? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Lord. a great question. Lord, okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's awesome, Lily. We appreciate um, just you sharing some of your heart there for, for the Lord and for, for music. Uh, we thought it's also helpful just to hear more things you're interested in, hobbies, interests. What, what do you like doing? Yeah, I like to uh, spend a lot of time outdoors. Yeah. Right now, this season makes it kind of difficult. It was pouring down rain as I walked in this morning. <laughs> yeah. But um, I like to hike. I like to play pickleball. And then as my dream of being a stay at home mom is coming real, I really enjoy like the homemaking. So yeah. baking and organizing and cooking dinners and cleaning and all that kind of stuff. I really enjoy that. And then of course for Caleb and Hudson and I at the moment, our favorite thing to do is nap. Yes. That's a very, <laughs> very important skill to have in, uh, in what Dan Perry, Dan Perry affectionately calls this baby boot camp. Yeah. Uh, That's what it feels being like. Put through the ringer. That's right. And surviving. And naps are vital to your survival. Yeah, right? absolutely. <laughs> so that's good. Um, all right, Nathan, you got anything else for her? Oh, yeah. So are you ready for our famous lightning round? Okay, define famous. Okay. <laughs> We've done it once. <laughs> that's right. This is now the second time. There we go. So it is famous. famous. All right. Can't choose between 
Simon and Ellie. Okay. I, I won't ask that one <laughs> this time. So similar questions to what Hori got, but slightly different. So are okay. you ready? Is this or that question? And I'm supposed to answer really quickly? Yeah, you answer quickly, and then you can expound on it. Okay. But, like, first thing in, comes to your mind. So if, if you, you wait too long, I'm going to hit the buzzer. Ah. Yeah, there you ah. go. No bragging. So if you could have any superpower, yes. would you choose flying uh-huh. or invisibility? Okay, I actually thought about this for a long time after George's. Um... <laughs> Uh, flying. I almost hit the buzzer. Why oh, flying? I'm sorry. Way too long. Why flying over invisibility? Because <laughs> why would I don't yeah. feel like you need to hide. Like just okay. be, just you're okay. Just see. This there. question says a lot about a person. Like, yeah, so yeah. Good, yeah. If, you, if you got something to hide. Also, why are you sneaking sneak around? around? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why I ask these questions. Harry Potter and the invisibility. Yeah. 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 But flying, I can get places he faster, and can, that's kind of cool. That's true. Flying would be cool. Yeah, but I, I want a broomstick. I want. I just want yeah, to be able to fly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I would. I would pick flying for sure. There you go. So, if you could go to a store, well, which one would you choose? Going to a store where every item is completely free. Mm-hmm. You can just get whatever you want. It's free. Or would you rather have anything in the world? Delivered to you same day, not Amazon mm-hmm. two days, but same day, whatever you want, but you have to pay for it. Which one would you choose? Oh, oh, oh gosh, uh, the delivery. The delivery because you don't always you don't always have the opportunity, especially now with a newborn baby at home. I can't just okay get up and yeah. go to the store. Yeah. But what if the store has everything free, anything you ever yeah, wanted? I but am it's like an hour away. Because Target, <laughs> I do love Target. Um, I can hear I can hear Caleb. As he's listening to this, going, Lily, no, it's free. I will go. I will go. Yes, that's exactly what. Caleb, this one's for you. Yes, right. Oh, oh man. All right, let's see. Um, ooh, I have a good one. If it's kind of the money thing, like we asked Jorge, but a little different twist, and this tells us a little more about your family. (laughs) Would you rather be given a hundred thousand dollars right now that you can spend on anything you wanted, or would you rather a hundred thousand dollars be given to Caleb? He can spend it however he wants, but Ooh. you can't touch it. Oh Ooh. well, that's how we do that, anyways. So <laughs> <laughs> I would give it to Caleb. I I go. trust him. He makes good decisions. There you go. There you go. That's what I was thinking. I was like, Caleb would invest all of it yeah. and make a lot more. I wouldn't get the instant gratification of getting the things that I want, but it's good in the long run. Caleb is my go-to person. To uh, ask financial questions. I, I think if it wouldn't be awkward, <laughs> I would ask Caleb to come manage all of my money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not that there's much of it, but he would do a much better job than I would. I'm actually less involved in our finances than he would like for me to yeah. be. I just trust him so much. That's right. That's right. <laughs> I just say, That's you right. tell me what to spend. That's good. That's so good. next podcast, we'll interview Caleb That's about right. finances. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last question. Are you ready? I'm ready. This is very important. Okay. Okay, get your mind right. It's not going to be important. I can feel it. No, it's very important. I can feel it. Harry Potter or Lord of the Rings? Oh, I knew you were going to ask me that. Lord of the Rings. Thank you. You have sold me. Absolutely. Wow. I love those movies. I don't know why I didn't watch them. So for those who don't know, we have introduced Caleb and Lily. Sarah and I have introduced Caleb and Lily to the Lord of the Rings for the first time. And they, we thought, okay, they're maybe not going to like it. They'll, They'll tolerate the first movie. Every week after we watched the first half of the first movie, they said, when are we going to watch the second half? When are we going to watch the next movie? And they were hooked. That so. was pre-baby. Yes. I love Harry Potter. Yeah. So he said, how are you? How can you yeah. not see Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There Harry Potter's go. the best. Well, I think that's all. I think she passed. You think she passed the pop quiz? I think we'll, I think we'll keep her on staff. Nathan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just have really appreciated both Lily and Jorge jump, jumping in. Uh, Aaron Dyer just did such an awesome job leading us in worship long before I was around Infinity. And um, we, when he told us, hey, you know, hey, my kids are getting older. I'm looking to kind of transition off staff. Still, still an elder at Infinity, still involved, but just uh, stepping away from that weekly commitment. Uh, I told, I told Aaron, no, <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're not allowed. And in God's incredible providence, uh, he, uh, the Navarros were have been here for a couple years now, and then when Lily and Caleb came uh, last year. We, Aaron and I kind of looked at each other like, hey, this might work out. And so we started praying toward that, praying as elders about um, what this position, you know, how this team might work out. And so then we approached y'all and said, hey, we've got this idea that we think is from the Lord, but we want y'all to confirm it. And for, for both you and, and Caleb and Sam and George to, to just jump in, it's been awesome. Just a huge blessing to us. So 
thank you for joining the Infinity Church staff team. We're glad to have you. Yeah, I'm super glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for joining us for our podcast today. It's been fun chatting, getting to know you more. I hope this has been uh, very beneficial and enlightening for our church members so they can get to know you more. Maybe they can ask you some controversial questions like, why did you pick Lord of the Rings? (laughs) Um, So we'll see. Uh, But yeah, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us on the Equip Our Church podcast. We hope this has been encouraging to you, and we hope you will join us again next time. 